Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. There are a lot of different types of functions that have infinite growth as you plug in larger and larger values for n. A lot of these you're going to see when you're dealing with sequences and finding limits. In this video we hope to give you just some shortcuts for dealing with limits where you may not have to use L'Hopital's rule uh, repeatedly or very often at all uh, if you're familiar with these. So I've just listed some families. We've got five families here listed them alphabetically. Uh, one of them being exponential growth. Uh, so if we have some base that is bigger than 1 to the nth power then that's going to be an exponential growth e to the n, 10 to the n, 2 to the n, etc. Those are types of exponential growth. We also have factorial growth. If we keep taking larger and larger factorials, uh, larger and larger starting numbers, then we're going to get infinite growth there as well. These expressions here are some examples of things you might call factorial growth. The graphs of logarithmic functions also tend toward infinity as we take larger and larger values. So whether it's a natural log or a base 10 log, uh, maybe we even have some sort of a square in the log or on the log. Those are going to be logarithmic growth as well. Polynomial growth we're going to use as a sort of loose term. Uh, polynomial we usually consider to be whole number positive powers of n. Here we're just looking at any positive power of n. So whether it's n, n squared, n cubed, even uh, square roots or rational exponents on our n. As long as those are positive powers of n, we'll consider that to be in the family of polynomial growth. They all grow similarly to one another. Super exponential growth, which you might deduce to be stronger than exponential growth, not only is there a variable in the power, but also the base is also growing itself. So we have the base growing and the power growing, both infinitely large as well. What we're going to do in this video is compare these so that you can make very quick assessments as to what limits might be when you see these things in comparison in a sequence. So first one we'll work on here is we want to compare logarithmic growth and polynomial growth. So assuming that we have some positive power of n and we're comparing it to just some logarithm, will they have infinite growth that is similar? Will one grow to infinity much more quickly than the other? So this limit of ln of n over n to the p, uh, this would be obviously an indeterminate form, infinite over infinite. So we would apply L'Hopital's rule. And if we apply L'Hopital's rule, then that tells us that that's going to be equal to the limit of the derivative of ln of n, which is 1 over n, over the derivative of n to the p, where p is just some positive power, so we would use the power rule here. So the p would come out front, and then the power would go down by 1, so we get to the p minus 1. If we go ahead and bump this n down, this is going to raise the power of this by 1, so I'm going to add an n down here. So that would be the limit of a 1 over p times n to the p. So again, I know this has infinite growth n to the p, and I just have some constant multiple out front. So if I have 1 over infinite growth, then that is going to be 0. Now what this tells us about these families of sequences, because this limit is zero, that is saying that the bottom of this fraction becomes infinitely large at a much, much faster rate than the top does. So we're saying that polynomials, n to the p, is going to grow much, much more quickly than a natural log of n. So we're going to say that polynomial growth is much, much faster. I'm going to use a double greater than here. That polynomial growth is much faster than logarithmic growth. Let's compare now polynomials to say exponentials. So I have an exponential growth on the top here. My base needs to be more than 1 for this to be growth and not decay. We'll keep our n to the p on the bottom. So I get infinite stuff on the top and infinite stuff on the bottom. We can apply L'Hopital's rule. And so we'll get an equivalent limit if we take the derivative of both of these. So the derivative of a to the n, remember, is going to be itself times the ln of the base. That's the rule for derivatives of exponentials. For the bottom we will again get p coming out front and the power going down by 1, so we'll get p n to the p minus 1. 
All right, so I still have a to the n on top. This is going to be infinite up here. I still have n to some power. That's going to be infinite here as well. Uh, what's going to keep happening as we repeat, if I do the derivative again using L'Hopital's rule, I'm going to get another ln of a that comes out here. I'm going to keep getting a to the n exactly as it is in the statement as I repeatedly do derivatives with L'Hopital's rule. As I continue to take the derivative of this, the power of n, though, is changing. Here, after this, I would get a p minus 2 exponent and then a p minus 3 exponent. So whatever this is, this exponent is getting smaller and smaller. So eventually, we'll get something that tends toward a constant. So this is really staying the same amount of infinite growth. This is going to continually repeat. So we're going to get basically the limit of a to the n times some constant over something that approaches a constant. And so what we'll end up with here is infinite growth over some constant, and that is going to tend toward infinity. So what this is saying, if this rational expression as a limit is infinite, then the top of this fraction grows much, much more quickly toward infinity than the bottom of the fraction. So in other words, our exponential growth is much faster than polynomial growth. And when we say much faster, we mean that eventually polynomial growth, even though it is infinite growth, looks like nothing compared to exponential growth. Next one here, let's compare exponentials and factorials. So I have a to the n over n factorial as a limit. Again, my base here is bigger than 1. The problem with taking the derivative of a factorial is that a factorial is not really a continuous function, and we know its behavior, so we can't really take the derivative of that. So this is an indeterminate form, but we can't really apply L'Hopital's rule. We have infinity over infinity. Uh, so what we want to do is imagine what's happening. Uh, so if we think about writing this out, on the top a to the n, that is shorthand for saying I have a multiplying a bunch of times and it keeps going and so how many copies of a do I have on the top well we have n copies of a on the top and so for n factorial on the bottom we would start at n and then we would multiply by one less than that and multiply by one less than that and we would keep going until we get down to the number one and this is also going to have, you can tell by the factorial, this is going to have n terms as well. So if I compare these, I have some sort of a constant here, and some sort of a constant here, and some sort of a constant here. And I keep multiplying by something, and we're getting smaller and smaller, because think about what happens on the left side here. As n gets really large, this fraction is going to tend toward zero, right? So we keep getting numbers that we're multiplying by that just get smaller and smaller. So this limit here is actually going to be zero. And that tells us that in this rational expression, if the limit is zero, that the top grows much, much slower than the bottom does. In other words, factorial growth grows so much more quickly than exponential growth that it eventually makes exponential growth look like zero once we take large enough values of n. Okay, let's do one more comparison here. Uh, so we have factorial growth, I think, is the one that's winning so far. We're going to compare it to super exponential growth. Let's look at it in a similar way here. Again, I can't really take the derivative of n factorial very easily, so we're going to go ahead and think of this as a limit. And what we have on the top, I have n, and I just keep having copies of n and I have a bunch of them. Since my exponent is n, that's saying that I have n copies of n on the top. And on the bottom, what's happening is I have n, but then I'm decreasing by 1, and then I'm decreasing by 1, and that's what's going on. And we keep doing that until we get down to 1. 
as we did before. Now this will have n terms, but notice the difference in the terms. For this one, if we look from the beginning, notice that n over n, if I just look at this first, consider those together as one fraction, that would be 1. And then n, the top, is bigger than n minus 1 on the bottom, so this is going to be bigger than 1 and n over n minus 2 is going to be even larger than that. It'll be bigger than 1 also. So I have 1 times number bigger than 1 times a number bigger than 1, and I keep getting numbers that are larger and larger. Uh, remember that n is tending toward infinity, so as we think of n over 3 and n over 2 and n over 1, these are very, very large values. So if I keep multiplying by numbers that are bigger than 1 forever, then we are going to get that this limit is infinite, this diverges here. So that's saying that the top of the fraction has a growth rate that is so much larger than factorial growth that eventually n factorial looks like nothing compared to n to the n. So we'll say n to the n super exponential growth grows infinitely faster than factorial growth eventually. Okay, so this gives us sort of our structure of what is the slowest growth and what is the fastest growth based on all of the testing that we did. Logarithmic growth, while infinite, is in terms of these five families the smallest of the infinite growths. Polynomial growth uh, is going to be the next largest, followed by exponential growth. Factorial growth, faster than exponential growth, but slower than super exponential growth. So if we keep in mind the rates of infinite growth of these five families, it becomes very short to do a lot of these limits. If I look at the limit of n cubed over 3 to the n, this is indeterminate, and I could use L'Hopital's rule uh, to try and work on this for a while, but what I can see here is that I have polynomial growth here and that I have exponential growth here, and since I know that exponential growth is quicker than polynomial growth, then I know that since the bottom is the faster growth, the bottom grows much more quickly than the top, then this limit is just going to be zero. If I look at the second one, I have polynomial growth here, so this is n to the p, and this is logarithmic growth. You can think about moving the 5 out to the front, right, and you would still just get 5 times logarithmic growth. So I have polynomial growth over logarithmic growth. The top grows much more quickly than the bottom. So when that happens, the limit will be infinite. So this diverges. For the third one, uh, I have 100 to the n over n to the n. 100 is a large base, but this is a fixed base. This is exponential growth. This is the base getting infinitely large and the exponent getting infinitely large. This is super exponential growth. Super exponential growth is faster than all of the other ones. Since the bottom grows much more quickly than the top, this one will be zero. Over here, I have factorial growth on the top. You look here and you go, well, I have triple exponential growth on the bottom, don't I? I have 3 to the n, 5 to the n, 10 to the n. Uh, we could really, I guess, combine all of these uh, properties of exponents. You could say 3 times 5 times 10, that's 150. So really you have 150 to the n. And even though that's a very large base, factorial growth is still going to be much quicker than exponential growth because the quicker type of growth is on the top then this limit will be infinite. This sequence will diverge. If we look at a few more, we want to be careful not to be deceived by things that may or may not be what we interpret here. This may look like exponential growth on the top, but it is not. Uh, all this is doing is changing signs. Negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. Uh, we're not actually getting infinite growth. So this is not exponential growth over polynomial growth. This is just changing signs, and the bottom is getting infinitely large. So if we keep bouncing back and forth positive and negative, positive, negative, uh, but the terms are all getting close to zero, then this limit is actually going to be zero. So don't be deceived that negative 1 to the n is exponential growth. With that, we mean something that is eventually approaching an infinite value, and this is not approaching an infinite value. Uh, for number 6 here, the limit of 0.9 to the n over ln n, similar thing. You might look at this and say, this is exponential growth, this is logarithmic growth, so this must be much quicker than this. The problem is 0.9 is smaller than 1, so if you keep multiplying by 0.9, you're actually getting a smaller number, not a larger number. So the top here the limit of the top is going to be zero, and the limit of the bottom is going to be infinity. So we actually go toward zero on the top, and zero over an infinite amount of growth is going to give us 
a limit of zero. For number seven here, we have the limit of sine of n over the square root of n. Sine of n, remember, just always stays between negative one and one. So the idea here is that you have numbers between negative one and one somewhere, and then you have something that gets very large eventually. So if you have numbers that are between negative one and one, and you keep dividing by more and more stuff, then this limit is going to be zero. For the last one here, number eight, we have logarithmic growth on the top. We can see that's the slowest type of growth. Be careful that we don't interpret the nth root of n as n to the n. The nth root of n, we should know that this limit is one. This is one of the special limits that we did in our previous video. So we actually get an infinite amount of growth on the top, but we get a limit of one on the bottom. So make sure that you're getting an infinite amount of growth on the top and the bottom when you're using these ideas to determine a limit. So this would be an infinite limit here. Looking at just a couple more, our last page here, we've got some limits that look like they might involve this, but they don't actually. Here I have what looks like super exponential growth on the top and super exponential growth on the bottom. You say, well, how do I do this? Maybe this limit is one. Uh, for this one, we would just write this limit uh, algebraically. So I would think of this whole fraction, the top is to the n and the bottom is to the n. So I should be able to rewrite this as the limit of the entire fraction n plus 1 over n all to the nth power, right? We can do that with properties of exponents. And then an interesting thing, if we think of another way to write this, then what we're really going to get is if I split this up, n over n is going to be 1 and 1 over n I will leave. And this is one of the special limits we went over in our last video as well. The limit of 1 plus a number over n to the n is actually e to that number. So this is e to the 1. Our limit here is actually e for this example. Okay, so these are both super exponential growths. So there's not really a way to just determine if the limit is 0 or infinite based on what we see here. We'll have to use some other method. Here at number 10, you can see these are both polynomial growth. So we go back to ideas from pre-cal uh, and finding horizontal asymptotes. We have a larger power of n on the bottom than we do on the top. So this limit is going to be 0. Here I have a higher power on the top than on the bottom, so these are both polynomial growth, but because I have a higher degree on the top than I do in the denominator, then that means my limit is going to be infinite. This will diverge. The last one here, we have polynomial growth on the top and the bottom. We have n cube and n cube, so the degrees are the same. We compare the lead coefficient, and here just a limit of 3 over 5. So these are not really using any of this growth rate stuff, even though we have those types of objects present. Uh, really, it's when we have one infinite growth rate and a different infinite growth rate from the list using those to compare where we will get the shortcuts. Okay, hopefully this helps you solve some of your limits super quick. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.